Who am I? The question of identity. Who am I? And someone included, why am I here? <laughs> who am I and why am I here? Or understanding who am I or who I am. Understanding who I am. Understanding who I am. Understanding who I am. This session has been tagged. Okay, Ni, nee, Ni, nee, please go ahead with your question. Go ahead, please. Ni, nee, I can see your hand, but you are not talking. Okay, maybe that's an error. Okay. Ni, nee, go ahead with your question, please. Why am I here? Who am I? Remember we are still discussing a comprehensive discussion on uh, self-discovery? And this is life calling and career cleaning. Our vision is to build an army of young professionals who are spiritually sound, secure financially, secularly relevant, and socially impactful. The vision of this group is to build an army of young professionals who are spiritually sound, secure financially, secularly relevant, and socially impactful. That's the objective. That's the objective. So who am I? And why am I here? To live the best kind of life in the new year, try as much as possible. Try as much as possible. To live the new year in an intentional manner. In an intentional manner. Live it by design, not by default. Live it by design, not by default. Someone define happiness. What do I need to be able, what, I, what do I need to do to be happy in the new year? So someone define happiness. He defined happiness as, he said, in order to be happy, your life needs to be guided based on, and he defined H-A-P-P-Y, heart, what does your heart yearn for? A, ability. Natural talent to do things so well. P, passion. What is it that it takes, that takes away your time because you are fulfilled doing it? P, personality. Are you an introvert or extrovert? Why? Yesterday. He said, what happened in your yesterday that you will like to remember? If you are going to remember the past, remember what is good about the past. If you are going to remember the past, remember what is good about the past. Don't remember what you hate, what you don't like, and the frustration of the past, but what is good about the past. Through this series, I'm hoping that you will discover your purpose and calling and your assignment in life. And I'm believing God that as many of you that are here that will be joining us in these three days. None of you will have no doubt in your mind as to what you are called to do or what you believe your life is about. Please note that you could discover more than one area and there's nothing wrong with that. The series we are starting today is a big challenge for many, and the inability to discover it is making people spend a good chunk of their life doing things that they don't have any business doing or spending the rest of their life on what they don't have any business 
even doing in the first place. However, it's very difficult. Sorry, it's not very difficult as you think. In discovering our calling, it's just paying attention to little, little things in our life, little, little details. The most important factor is to know that you are, you have eaten in you some natural inclination. You have eaten in you some natural inclination that you probably have not been taking notice of. You know, there's this common saying that the destiny of a child can be known by his inclination. And there's a great truth in it. I've studied my son for a while and I have an idea of what I think he should do with his life. I have an idea. It's not going to be imposed on him. I'm going to help him to see it so he can align with it himself. And please note, look, there's nothing you love to do that is useless. Because some might say, my own is cooking. Some might say, my own is uh, cleaning. You know, I was with some teenagers on, I think it was on Saturday, and we're discussing this issue. Saturday morning precisely. And... Uh, <laughs> they were they were ashamed to say that what they love to do is cooking one of them in fact that one it was the sister that said it she could not even say it she could not even say it why? <laughs> because he doesn't see cooking as something that is important. What is important? Being a doctor is what is important. Being an engineer is what is important. Being a lawyer is what is important. Being a cook is not important. See what our society has installed in us. Our society is making young people to, to miss their destiny. To meet their destiny. To meet their destiny. Why? Because of, you know, like I was saying to uh, something the other time, we are more interested in which profession is bringing money. Which profession? Because the only thing we think about is survival. It is sad. It is so sad that the only thing we think about is survival. How on earth can we live life in such a manner that the only thing is just survival? Nobody is asking, are we here for survival? And you know the interesting thing about this is that, you know, you know, I... Because the scripture is the truth, my reference is always the scripture. So, sorry, no offense to any faith joining us. I'll be using Bible as my scriptural reference point. Now, how on earth can an individual think that he is here just to pay bills. And he's going to spend half of his years of his life to pay bills. You know, when I finished school, I, this was one of my thoughts. I said, when I started working, at some point, I started asking a very important question. And what was the important question? What's the important question? The important question is, what's life about? I don't know if how many of you have asked that question. Why am I here? If you have not asked that question, please take time to ask that question. 
What's life about? Why am I here? Why, why, what am I supposed to be doing with my life? You know, if you don't ask this question and find a way to answer the question, let me tell you, it's going to haunt you eventually. When you are now very comfortable. When you are now very comfortable, you will now identify the futility of what the accomplishment. The fact that the only thing I achieve in this life is that I'm here and I'm here solely. I'm here and I'm here solely just to pay bills. Of course, that cannot be the reason. That cannot be the reason. Because if that be the reason, then sincerely, it will be meaningless. How can I spend a good chunk of my life and the only thing I can say I've done is that I've paid bills, I've married, give back to children, have kids, send them to school. Life is far, far better bigger than that, far, far bigger than that. But you and I know what, what has been sold to us, what we grew up with, the paradigm that we embrace. It's not our fault, really. It was installed in us. It was installed in us. That is why you must live life not by default, but by design. We must live life not by default, but by design. So why? What's my life about? Who am I? I should identify myself. I should identify myself. There are activities around us daily that point our attention to these things. But like I said, sometimes we trivialize it. We look away from it. We downplay it. Because we trivialize it, we look away from it, we downplay it, then it looks like this cannot be why I'm here. This cannot be my contribution to humanity. Says who? Says the society, society define it. <laughs> to find who you are, pay attention to yourself. Pay attention to what attracts your attention. Your calling is buried in you, even before you were born into the world. You know, sometimes we talk about our calling as if it's lost. Someone said, I want to find my calling. As if it's lost. It's buried in you. And the, the concept is simple. God is not frivolous. He will not create you without a purpose. He will not create you to be purposeless. And we have an example in scriptures. Before I formed thee in the belly. I ordain thee a prophet to nations. Before I formed thee in the belly, I ordain thee a prophet to nations. Before I formed thee in the belly, I ordain thee a prophet to nations. Before I formed thee, I ordain thee a prophet to nations. What does that suggest to us? That suggests basically that we were not an afterthought, even if you were born out of wedlock. If, we, if you were born by a single parent, even if your parents are divorced, even if you didn't know your parents, you grew up with someone else entirely and he said they dumped you in gutter. You are not an afterthought. For me, that's very comforting. That's very comforting. That's very comforting. That's very comforting. That God thought of me before I came into this world. That God thought of me before I came into this world. 
I am not an afterthought. I am not an accident. I am not a mistake. I am not an illegitimate child. Even if my mother is an alert and if she doesn't even know which of the men is left with, I am still not an afterthought. That, that's what's interesting about our lives. If God allowed that life to come into this world, be rest assured, he is not frivolous. He has a reason for sending him into this world. The only challenge is that many never look so much inward. You know, our society and environment is so noisy. It's so noisy. Many never look inward to see and discover it. Many never look inward to see and discover it. That's the challenge of our world. That's the challenge of our world. That is the challenge of our world. But do you know the interesting thing? The scripture did not leave us in doubt as to answer to these questions. The scripture did not leave us in doubt as to answer to these questions. It didn't leave us in doubt. No, 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 no. It didn't leave us in doubt. We are the one. We are the one that are in doubt because the society already defined for us the way they want us to live. And our environment already affects our experiences and everything about our life. So it's not like a parent talking about God that do try and error with our lives as their children by saying that you should be doctor. No, 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 you should be lawyer. I thought you would be doctor before, but now you should be lawyer. <laughs> God is such a God of purpose that he already had a plan for you before your parents met. As a matter of fact, because of the genetic composition that you need in order to fulfill your purpose, it cost, made it possible because it's an orchestral circumstances for your parents to meet in order to bring you into this world. That is why the scripture says that before I formed you in the belly, I knew thee and ordained thee to be a prophet to nations. I ordained you to be a prophet to nations. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The beginning and the end. So the assurance that God had you in mind is what informed your creation in the first place. So you are, not, you are then packaged by him to be able to achieve his purpose, the purpose for which he has in mind when he created you. Now, do you know when the children of Israel were in servitude, when they were in servitude, you know what happened? That's in Egypt. You know what happened? Why they were in servitude, the Bible says that the prayer, the cry of children of Israel reached him. And Moses was gone. He already had a plan. Some years down the line, which eventually became about 80 years down the line after Moses was born, because people have argued that Moses did some things that made him to extend and did not start his what he believed was called for on time. Because Moses knew there's something about him that has to do with helping the children of Israel. And he confessed that actually. So he was created, born, sent into this world to fix that problem. Jesus was sent into this world to fix problem of sin also. Every one of us has a reason for our existence. Like I said, what happened when we got here is that
What happened when we got there is that we were distracted. We were distracted. And we had a very big distraction. We were distracted by what to eat, what to drink, what to put on. Do you notice the way children change? From when a child is born, when a child is five, six, seven, he has big dreams, big dreams. He's not thinking of what to eat and what to drink. Big dreams. When he gets to secondary school or finish secondary school, the dream begins to change. To courses that make money. To courses that, uh, that are lucrative. It begins to change. It begins to change. By the time that child, by the time that child eventually becomes 25 and finish university, he has lost the dream completely. Now, he's looking at his friend who is working in an IT firm. He's looking at his friend who is working in an engineering company. He's looking at his friend who is working in a big organization. He's looking at his friend. That cloud is mine. That dream, those things he enjoyed doing when he was young, is lost completely. You know why children do that? At that age, they are closer to the source. The more we age, the farther we are away from the creator. The farther we are away from our design. The farther we are away from our, our natural inclination. Because there are a barrage of so many things that decloud us and overshadow our mind and make us to think only of survival. We are not created for survival, ladies and gentlemen. We are not created for survival. 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 But people live to survive. So people live for a good chunk of their life just going to work, coming back, going to work, coming back, marry, have kids, have grow old, and then it's time to go. And he spent the whole year paying bills. That's why I asked that question. If that is what everybody that came into this world do, in fact, do you know you will not have that job, actually? Because someone thought of that idea of that business. That's how you have the job in the first place. You were packaged with talent. You were packaged with temperament. You were packaged with skills. You were packaged with competence. You were packaged with so many resources. You were packaged with so many resources that are required for you to be able to fulfill your area of calling. You were put together. God put you together. He designed you. You know, that, that's why human beings are amazing. So that's why sometimes you should not limit yourself what you can do. You should just keep developing yourself so you can unravel and discover more of yourself and what you can achieve with your life. He packaged you with talent and temperament. He packaged you with skill and competence. He packaged you with, 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 with unique ability to solve a unique problem. Despite the way God has packaged you for your calling, you will not normally and naturally walk into it most times. Only few people are able to naturally walk into their calling. Only few. And those few is because sometimes they just discover they love this thing and they give it a try and boom, boom, boom. They just love it. They give it a try and then the result was amazing. They just try it. They just try it. Some stumbled into it. For me, for example, I, it was when I discover myself eventually. And no, I took an inventory. And I realized that there is a recurring decima in my life. From primary school to secondary school to university, I just like teaching, training, 
talking, disseminating knowledge. I, I, when I was in university, I did a tutorial to a level that, on, I think on Tuesday and Thursday, tutorial actually Tuesday and Thursday. So from four to six, six to eight, eight to 12, 10, 10 to 12, I have different classes and different faculty or I went to a medical school. So from the medical student to the nursing student, to my classmate, to my, uh, to the pharmacy student, a medical lab student, I come to the hostel by 12 midnight, I'll be tired, ready to just go and crash and sleep. In secondary school, I was the class captain and I coordinate tutorial for my colleague when we're writing GC and Y, teaching ourselves. So along the line, I knew that if anything I'm going to do in life must have something to do with speaking, particularly determinating knowledge, but I needed to find area I'm passionate about. And I discovered that when I meet someone who is an undergraduate or just finished school or just got a job or has been working for like three, four, five years, I'm interested in what he's doing with his life. And I can be with him for another 35 hours discussing this issue. Just trying to make him or her make a sense of his life and how he must live. But I discovered that only few people are interested. At some point I was frustrated, but later I realized that, like my mentor would say, someone must be foolish for wisdom to have value. Someone must be foolish for wisdom to have value. Everybody cannot be wise. Everybody cannot be wise. So some people, this conversation is trash. It doesn't make sense. What is he talking about? What was this? What's this? You know why? Someone must be foolish for wisdom to have value. Everybody cannot be wise. Paul said, Paul the apostle, he said, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I behaved as a child. He said, when I became a man, I put away childish things. I put away childish things. When I became a man, I pushed away childish things. I learned a big lesson from there. If an apostle says he behaved like a child. You know, I was talking to someone during the week. I said, look, this 2021, please, I beg you. Check different area of your life. Different area of your life. You know, there was a time we, 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 no, that was last year. We, during the life coin and career cleaning session, we discovered the 360 degree life. The 360 degree life. Uh, I want to see if I will be able to get it. I'm trying to see if I can open it. I want to show some, show, show those of us that are not here. The 360 degree life. Now, what was that about? What was that about? I, I, I want to show you that 360 degree life and I want to make a statement. That's what I want to show you. Uh, I want you to make a statement. Okay, good. So I'm sharing my screen again. There's something I just opened I want to share with you. Those of us on ground, I will drop it on the WhatsApp group so we can see it on the WhatsApp group. Are you on the WhatsApp group? Chidi, send our number. Let me add her. So um, look at what is on the screen. Look at what is on the screen. Just check out what's on the screen right now. No, I have your number now. Chat to me. Chat to me. Let me look at it. Um, look at what's on the screen now. The 360 degree life. Now, let me, let me tell you something in 2021. Please, don't gamble with your life. Don't joke with your life. If in your circle, from your mentor to your pastor or your church to different places you learn from, if any of this area is missing, get a teacher in that area to teach you. What do I mean? So 
So if for many of us, and I think churches is the one to teach this so that people can be well grounded. But I mean, most churches focus only on the life of the Christ likeness. Most churches focus only on the Christ likeness. That's what most churches focus on. Now, that means for most churches, nobody tells you about your health, intellectual life, your emotional life, your career, your love life, parenting life, social life, financial life, quality of life, career and calling. Nobody tells you anything about it. <laughs> if nobody's telling you, you know what? Go and look for a teacher in this area. We are in a world of technology. YouTube have enough. Look for someone to teach you. If, if there is any area of your life that you are lacking, please find a teacher. Look for someone who is an expert in that field who can teach you. So you can be well ground, rounded as human being. The reason why I say that is this. If Paul said, when I was a child, Paul is basically saying that as an apostle, he also behaved childishly sometimes. He said he has to deliberately put away childish things. Childish thinking. Childish thinking. Childish speech. Childish character and behavior. He said he has to deliberately push it away. What does that mean? That basically means that our, not, our default setting as human being is foolishness. Our default setting as human being is foolishness. Our default setting as human being is foolishness. Why? The society installed it before we even aware. So by the time we are aware of ourselves, they have installed it. Our brother, our sister, our father, our mother, our uncle, our aunt, our school. They didn't do it deliberately. Sometimes they even mean well, but what they install in us is foolishness. That's what they install in us, foolishness. And you know Someone must be foolish for wisdom to have value. Someone must be foolish for wisdom to have value. And always remember that everybody cannot be wise. That means in this life, people are going to behave, not because they want to misbehave, but because they don't know any better. But because they don't know any better. And the implication of that is that because they don't know any better, they will become leader and lead people, particularly in a church setting. Particularly in a church setting. They are going to lead people. And I tell you, Many a times, they lead people astray and make people to take a decision. Imagine a guy was telling me when he wanted to go to school, he wanted to be a lawyer. He went to talk to his pastor. And his pastor said, lawyers are liars. So he should not go and do law. <laughs> You know, sometimes our, how do I describe it now? The, the, the philosophy with which we live our life, and all of us in life, we're going to decide the way we want to live our life. And you always have a choice on the way you want to live your life. If you don't audit the belief system of your teacher, and you take everything he says, hook, line, and sinker, I tell you, you will or you might suffer for it. You might suffer for it. And, and that for me is a big challenge. That means that as human beings, you are going to be doing things not because that's what you want to do, but because you don't know any better. This is why you owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself 
you owe it to yourself to acquire skill as much as you can in this life. Knowledge on how to live. On how to live and live a better life. You owe it to yourself, action. You owe it to yourself. So that means it is a personal responsibility. It is a personal responsibility. Back to my conversation. You were packaged with talent and temperament required for you to be able to fulfill that area of calling. Despite the way God has packaged you for your calling, you will not normally walk naturally into it because you are influenced by your environment. Your environment affects your experiences. Your experiences affect your knowledge about life. All this, your environment, your experience, your knowledge, affect your belief system. Your belief system affect the things you value I've heard the things you value. The reason why some people you told are not here is because this is not what they value. And the society is what informs them not to value things like this. The things you value and the things you value affect the choices you make and the choices you make affect the actions you take. This is why you will not naturally walk. This is why you will not naturally walk into your college. The environment has a tendency to influence you differently because of what your parent is saying, like you have to be a doctor or you have to be a lawyer. And they could be very wrong. Even though you have some natural inclination, you will begin to doubt that natural inclination just because of this parental influence. Just because of this parental influence, and if you are the unlucky type, who is very good in everything, the unlucky type, the unlucky type. If you are the unlucky type, who is very good in everything, wow. You will be deranged. Because you are good in everything, you can do art, you can do commercial, you can do science. So you, you know, but if you are good in one area, the other area you don't know it at all, you're always failing. Uh -huh. You are forced. You, can you see the, the beauty of having weakness in some areas? The beauty. It makes you to reduce the area of competence you want to consider. Because these are the areas you are good at and you love and you enjoy. That when you love everything, you enjoy everything, you can do everything, but you're not very passionate about all of them. But you can perform in all of them anyway. So, you know what? You will be coerced, encouraged to do any of them. The environment has tendency to influence you. And that's the challenge all of us face, all of us. What determines your calling should not be in the things within your country, the opportunities around but rather it's buried inside of you. So don't find your calling, but rather discover it because it is inside you. It can be found in your emotion, in your likeness, in your like and dislike, in your build up, in your composition, in your inclination. Even if you saw it in your dream, it is not because God just came up with it. It is cause it has always been inside of you. It's not because God, came up, God came up, just came up with it. It's because it has always been inside of you. But because the society is so noisy <laughs> and you're unable to see it. The society is so noisy and you're unable to see it. Then it becomes very difficult. Very, very difficult for you. To be able to, you know, we lost ourselves. We just, we just lost ourselves. We just lost ourselves. It's amazing the way we lost ourselves. It's amazing the way we lost ourselves. <laughs> it's amazing the way we lost ourselves. We just lost ourselves completely. You are not an accident. 
Because God said, before I formed you in the belly, I knew thee. And before that comment out of the womb, I sanctified thee, I separate thee. I ordain you as a prophet to nation. Your purpose precedes your creation. So you were created to align with a purpose for which you were sent here. So instead of being worried for what they are being created for, mankind are only worried about marriage. Mankind are more worried about children. Mankind are worried about what to eat, what to drink, what to put on. Mankind are more worried about properties. If you can discover yourself and start to do things that you are created for, all these other things will be added to you. All these other things will be added to you. All these other things will be added to you. All these other things will be added to you. But you know what? What you eat and what you drink are so powerful. <laughs> they are so powerful. I'm telling you, they are so powerful. What you eat and what you drink, the 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 <laughs> the drive for survival. So how do you know that plan and purpose? Looking what to your natural inclination. For example, like I said earlier, my inclination is knowledge impartation right from secondary school. And this was aggravated in university. I also have an inclination towards self-discovery and career development. I organized the first self-discovery and career development, my first seminar in 2007. And it was a six-week program for medical students. I meet them every Saturday for the whole day. And then I was working in Diamond Bank. I meet them every Saturday discussing this issue for six weeks. So it's already in us. We are not just conscious of it. Look at the case of Moses. He had a natural inclination to go and be a freedom fighter. And that was why he fight. He fought to kill that Egyptian that was fighting with that Israelite. The things that you are naturally, that naturally uh, grab, the things that you naturally gravitate towards is a pointer to the direction of your calling. Moses calling was buried in his emotion. He was buried in his anger. He was buried in his passion. He was buried in his temperament. You are supposed to go to school. That's why those that are just have not entered school that are listening to this, you have an advantage. You are supposed to go to school to go and study a course that sharpens your natural inclination, your natural gifting, and make you to become adequately equipped to manifest your calling on the earth. So you might like working with things with your hands. And the school then will let you know that you should be looking at an area of engineering to specialize in because you like to work with things you can see and touch. Exactly. Education is supposed to be helping you to sharpen that area. But today, education is not doing that purpose. Education today is help is make, taking people far away from what they are called to do. Education is supposed to be complementary. That is helping you to be able to use your gift effectively and efficiently. Yes, going into a new year, are you going to just continue the same old way you continue? Remember, you are not supposed to be living by default. You are supposed to be living by design. Many people in our world are living by default, not by design. Education refines the raw gift and talent you have 
in order to be able to use it to serve your world in a way that give you maximum satisfaction and compensation. So what comes first is not education, but rather discovery of yourself. Unfortunately today, we put the card before the horse. Look at another Bible character, David. David was more proactive than his brother in going to take care of the sheep and defend them. You know, after a while, they left David alone. David alone is the one that is with them. His brother were not interested. His brother were not interested. And his father left him. This was his inclination as a shepherd. But God was preparing him to be shepherd of Israel. This was in preparation for defending Israelites. That was why he showed interest in fighting to defeat Goliath. It was the leadership inclination in David that made him not to run away from the bear and the lion. David believed he had responsibility over the sheep. And he passed that test. He fought the bear and the lion. If only you can be calm. If only you can be calm and be by yourself alone and look out for what you gravitate towards, your natural tendency, you will discover yourself. Another example in scripture is seen in the life of Joseph. He was already dreaming and interpreting it, even as a child in the family. You are not an accident at all. You are not an accident. You are not an accident. And it's very important that you realize you are not an accident. If you don't realize you're not an accident, you know what will happen? You will live as if you are an accident. Because you are going to look at your past. You are going to look at things that were not right in your past. You're going to look at the mistake your parent made. You're going to look at what they told you, how you were born. And sincerely, you're going to think, indeed, you are a mistake. But you know what? You were never a mistake. You were never a mistake. If that's one thing you're able to get today, is that you were never a mistake, God has an, a thought about you. He thought of you. So if he thought of you, so what was his thought about you? What was his thought about you? What was the thought about you? What did he think about you? What was he thinking about you? What does he want you to do? What did he want you to do? So we can live a more impactful life on this earth. <laughs> Let's try to mute our mic, please, so we can avoid. Uh, distraction. As I round off, let's go back to the case of Moses. God saw the problem ahead. He saw the problem ahead. The problem of the children of Israel. And he sent Moses. So he saw a problem ahead and sent you here to address it. He created you to be an answer to a problem. God saw the problem and cry of the children of Israel. And he called the parent of Moses to meet and give back to him. And he put inside Moses everything needed to fight. In fact, if you look at the circumstances that surround the birth of Moses, Moses was born at a time children, male children were being killed. Look at this, look at this. And he was taken to go and he was hit for three months and then take to go and drop somewhere. They drop it in a place they know the daughter of Pharaoh will see him. Daughter of Pharaoh does not have a child. Daughter of Pharaoh adopted him. The plan worked. The sister met daughter of Pharaoh 
and he got a nanny to come and help, and it was Moses' mother that came to help nurture him. Moses grew up in the palace, let me tell you. The way they decimated the children of Israel, their mindset, their mentality, not slavery brought them scarcity mindset, slavery mindset, small-mindedness, None of the children of Israel could have been able to deliver them from servitude. It takes someone who can speak truth to power. And to be able to speak truth to power, you must have grew up within that system. You know them. You know their weaknesses. He grew up in the palace. He could confront Pharaoh. He could confront Pharaoh. God is an orchestrator of circumstances. We are not an accident at all. God saw the problem of, that Moses was going to address hundreds of years ahead, and when the time was ripe, he sent him to the earth. If you are far away from what you are born to do, then Satan can take you out if he deem it necessary. Because sincerely, if you are not fulfilling your calling on the earth, you are not protected the way you should be protected. You are not you are not preserved because you are not useful for God on the earth. You know, Christ kept saying something to his disciples. Christ said, my time is not yet. My time is not yet. My time is not yet. Jesus said, my time is not yet come. But their time is always ready. He said, they sought to take him. But no man could lay hand on him. Because his hour was not yet come. This word spake Jesus in the sanctuary as he taught in the temple. No man lay hand on him, for his hour was not yet come. Now, therefore, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that the hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved the all, he loved the world even unto the end. The reason why it could not be killed is because his hour was not yet come. He had a purpose to fulfill on the earth. That is the beauty of living for a divine purpose on the earth. That is the beauty of living for a divine purpose on the earth. I'm sorry to say, you are not on the earth to just be born again, go to church, to go to heaven. You have much more than that. Going to heaven is important. Because then you have an afterlife. But while you are here, you have an assignment also. Which was the original plan. Redemption plan came along the line because of the death, because of sin of mankind. Redemption plan was not in the plan before. It came. God brought it along the line because of sin of mankind. He had an original plan. What was the original plan? Be fruitful multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion, be fruitful. What does it mean to be fruitful? To produce fruit that benefits others, not for yourself. <laughs> to produce fruit that benefits others, not for yourself. When you are producing for yourself, no, that's not being fruitful. Being fruitful is producing for others. Being fruitful is producing for others. Being fruitful is producing for others. Now that you know these things, happy and blessed are you if you do them. <laughs> I'm done with the first session. I can see a lot of comments. I don't know if it's comment or question. Let me go through them. Question, right? Okay, let me go through them before I, before people ask the question directly. Um, okay, someone said, our default setting as human being is foolishness. Yes, something. That's it. The society installed it into us. So the default installation is foolishness. How come it's easier for some people to find their purpose than others? Some are, I would say, lucky. And the reason is, their parents give them environment to make it happen. Their parents give them environment to make it happen. Because sometimes their parents, it's not, not that their parents are well, but their parents are just liberal. They allow their children to do what they want, they love. Not because their parent knows that this is what the children is called to do. So I would say they are lucky. They are just lucky. Because 
the parents made it happen. Or the environment they grew up, for example, in the Western world, they create a system that want people to do what they love to do. So they end up having a lot of people working within their area of college. But many of them also are still in the, what they call in the US, Uncle Sam system. <laughs> what about people that don't have access to this kind of information? Faith, you are very correct. That is the challenge. You know, a lot of people will not have access to this kind of information because wisdom is not available to all. Wisdom is scarce. Foolishness is what is available. Foolishness is democratized. A lot of people will not have it because, but let me now tell you something. God is a just God. If you think about life, if you think and you search for what life is about, I can assure you. If you think about life and you search for what life is about, I can assure you, you will discover what we are discussing today. But if you don't think and search for what life is all about, you will not discover. You will not discover what we are discussing today. Most times, to get the desired information that one lack in completeness is expensive. What does one do if they can't afford it? I'm talking about a student's point of view. <laughs> Today, that assertion of faith is not true. Why? You know why it's not true? Internet has made it possible for you to, to be able to get it at a cheaper rate. The first thing that must happen is a change inside that is asking for more about life, not just survival. If that change does not happen, a change for significance. If that change does not happen, a change for significance beyond survival and successful, you will not begin to search. And if you don't begin to search, you will not find. But about the fact that it's expensive, I think internet will make it cheaper. So does it mean that there is difference between finding something and discovering it? Finding it means it was lost. Finding in me was lost, but it was not lost. It has always been inside you. It was not lost. It has always been inside you. It was not lost. Discovery sounds like a lot of learning and unlearning. Yes. And a lot of time. Yes. You are not an accident at all. Who even started the standard of society that we are suffocating? <laughs> Faith, I love your question. Who started it? <laughs> it evolved over time. There is a narrative in the society about survival. There is a narrative in the society about survival. We only think, you know, thinking about survival. Some of you are Christian. Jesus said, labor not for the meat that perishes. So if I'm a Christian and I think, and I read the Bible, I should think about that question. So if Jesus said, labor not for the meat that perishes, so what are we supposed to labor for? That is the question we should be asking ourselves as Christians, but we don't ask that question. If Jesus said, labor not for the meat that perishes, that means there's something we have to be laboring for, but we don't labor for it. What do we labor for? Do what to eat and what to drink and what to put on. <laughs> what to eat and what to drink and what to put on. That is what we spend our time and our life laboring for. Laboring for. Laboring for. How on earth can human be <laughs> just living for survival? But the Bible said, you know, I said it before that a number of pastors in Nigeria, not just in Nigeria, in many parts of the world, don't understand life sincerely, the science of living. 
And because they don't understand life, and because they don't understand life, look at what happened. Because many don't understand life, what we end up doing is living for survival. Because many don't understand life, what we end up doing is living for survival. And that's the biggest challenge we have as human beings. But the Bible says, labor not for the meat that perishes. Labor not for the meat that perishes. So the question you should then ask is, I'm coming back to faith question. The question we should then ask is, so why are people laboring for the meat that perishes, even though they read the Bible? Because many don't live, and this is the biggest challenge for Christianity in Nigeria and in the world generally. Many don't live based on the Christian ideals or the principle of Christ. Many live based on the dictate of the society. Many live based on the dictate on the society, not based on the ideal of Christ. And that's a big challenge. That's a very big challenge. Very big challenge. Because people live by the dictate of the society. People are not living by the principle and teaching of Christ. And you know, society speaks to you every day, every second, every minute. Even if you are taught in church, you probably are taught when you go on Sunday, unless you go online and look for other material to learn from. I'm trying to answer faith question. Faith has so many questions. Who even started the standard of society that we are suffocating in? <laughs> Is it possible for more than one person to be called to solve a particular problem? Yes, of course, of course, of course. One person is not enough. One person is not enough. Only that one person might be doing it like the lady I told you is doing street to school somewhere in Abulia Iba, but nobody is doing street to school where I live in Akoka. Nobody is doing street to school in Aja. Nobody is, how many people are doing street to school in Lagos? Very few. So one person cannot cover the whole. That's why human beings are many, because we need more people to fix the problem in the society. Um, okay, Stella even responded to faith already. What would you say to some, someone who feels like jack of all trades and is not clear on what problem to solve? Which of all the area are you most passionate about? Which of all the area are you most passionate about? That area you are most passionate about should be your first focus. Don't be jack of all trades because like I said, you can't solve all problems. You can only solve a few that you are equipped to solve. Let me take off other questions. Welcome. <laughs> Morning. Let me take other questions. Yes. We have about, about 90 people online, yes. Let me take other questions. Yes, you can raise up your hand or drop it as comment. Faith seems to ask most of the question. But I would like to take uh, hear from you. Uh, the last time I started from online, and I didn't remember people that are here. So let me, I will take a comment now from here. What, before I hear from you. So those that were around earlier, uh, Jane or Janet and Chidi. Okay, Funke, I will come to you. Let me hear from people that are here with me at the uh, online on-ground session. All right, so. Um, okay, um, so you think the case for understanding Okay. It's, it's, for me, it's very critical or the fourth part of that. She be consistent in our, you know, in our daily life. Yes. Because, um, and also, like the last person I did mention about um, being jack of all trades. But for me, uh, initially I had that idea, you know. Yeah, but I think um, with time, clarity will be to get in. Okay. As you begin to know more about yourself and you have more experience. So the more you have people, you have events, and you have opportunities, you need to dictate what direction you should go. But of course, you have the first sight of what is exactly what area or sector. So for me, um, the ability to know what it is your life is about is very critical to living the best kind of life. And that's why this particular session is very critical. Yes, Janet. 
Okay, so you are commenting, not asking questions. Yes, Janet. Okay. Sorry, I didn't get that. If I can shed more light on. Okay, my life, okay. Light, look, like I said, for me to answer any question about light, I go to the truth. Where is the truth? The scriptures. When God created man, what was the first thing he said? Be fruitful. So for me, life is about fruitfulness. So that means I have to now define what does fruitfulness mean? So I look at a tree and I ask myself, when do you say a tree is fruitful? When the tree bears fruit for others, not himself. A tree that is not producing fruit is producing fruit for himself. It is alive. He's being fruitful, only that he's eating everything. So all the nutrients from under the ground, he's using it for himself. Selfishness. So he said, be fruitful. So if God said, be fruitful, now that was the original plan. The original plan was not a redemption plan. There was no need to be born again in Genesis. That's why I tell Christians that they only believe the only reason why the idea is to be born again and go to heaven. I said that's not true. Being born again and go to heaven is very important. The only thing he did is to bring you back to the line. So you can now align back with God. He said, be fruitful. That's the first instruction. So that's what life is about. And that's the origin and the source. That's what life is about. Be fruitful, first of all. And then multiply. Replenish the earth of you. Another discussion entirely. I can talk about it later on. But be fruitful. So the question now is, when a tree is fruitful, the tree produces fruit for others to eat from, right? So if I, my life is fruitful, then my life must be producing something that others benefit from. If my life does not produce fruit for others to benefit from, I am not living an effective life. I am living a boring, useless life, a life that in my latter years, I will really not be happy with myself because I will have just lived only for self. That's not an effective life because that life was not used to achieve the purpose for which it was created. It's like there was a story I heard of someone. They bought him a, a tablet in a nice pack. But look at this thing now. Look at this thing. The way you see it now, does it look like does it look like a tabletop? Isn't that a nice tabletop? The woman started putting food on it. He didn't even open it. He was putting drink, uh, saucer, put it as a tabletop, a tablet, because it was flat. And because it was in wrap like this. Why? When the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. So when we use our life to be buying cars, to building houses, to getting married, having kids. And that's the only thing we think about life. As good as those things are, that's the only thing we think about life. Abuse of human life. That's abuse. You're abusing yourself. You're not being fruitful because you're not producing fruit for others to benefit from. I'm going to answer your question. Okay, so any other question or comment? No, okay. So let me come to those of us online. We still have about 20 of us online right now. Funke, go ahead with your question. You can unmute yourself. All right, my question comes from the um, quote you said concerning that the Bible says you should um, be fruitful and multiply. So as, as a man, like, Maybe when you discover your purpose and you get to see that you have so many, um, maybe let me say many gifts. So does that mean can you can you like fulfill all or just pick maybe like two things and good at? Like I get my question, sir. Sorry, can you take it again, please? I'm talking about understanding your purpose. Okay. All right, sir. Go ahead. My question is that when the Bible says you should be food, the Bible says you should be food and multiply, and I was not like as a man, maybe 
uh, um, discover your purpose. I get to see that you have so many, uh, maybe gifts and talents God has given you. Maybe you can do this, you can do that. Will you um, still try to like pick maybe two things you are very good at or make sure you fulfill all those purpose, make sure you do everything. Because at times when you are filled with so many works that you're very good at, and you see some people telling you that why can't you just take like two or three? Some people are advising that why can't you just do two things or three things you are very good at and be very sure of what you are doing and those two can boost your life, things like that. And meanwhile, I've been seeing so many called great leaders, those icons that they are very much talented, they make of so many, they are good at so many things. So I'm not getting to understand that aspect, sir. Concerning now, you understanding your purpose, sir. Yes. So your concern is if someone is, if someone discover different area in which is, um, he feels is gifted, he feels is uh, useful, he feels in love, yes, sir. which of them should he choose, right? Yes, sir. Good. First of all, you need to know that you can do more than one. You can do yes, two, sir. you can do three, you can do four. But you should start with one, the one that you are most passionate about. You should start with one, the one that you are most passionate about, or the one that you are you find a lot easier to start because of resources, or because of resources, because of time, because of other exigencies. What I'm going to say is that current circumstances you have can dictate which of them is most expedient at that time. Current circumstances you have can dictate that. Current circumstances you have can dictate that. For example, let me tell you one thing. Let me tell you, um, life planning and career cleaning is supposed to go to campuses, so I desire to be on campuses, but I can't do that right now for obvious reasons, number one. For me to be able to do it on campus, I need to be in that environment. In order to be in that environment, I need to be, have some academic qualification. So I pick up a, a program that will help me to be a visiting lecturer to universities. But in preparation for that, you see all that we have been doing from April till December, almost every night we meet online for one hour sometimes two hours, almost every night, sometimes twice a day during the total lockdown, we meet twice a day, 12 and eight, every day. All those sessions were recorded and it's deliberate. So my plan is when I begin to have access on campus, I'm going to develop leaders. I'm going to give them those materials. They're going to use it to develop themselves and then disseminate it to their colleague on campus. Now, that, that might take me another five to 10 years to achieve, but I'm already working towards it. But the one I can do today is to talk to people around me, people within my circle of influence, talking to them, sending messages to them, and seeing how we can have this conversation. So today we are more than 20 here with people on ground and online, and we're having this session. Does it make sense, um, Funke? Yes, sir. Have I answered your question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank All right. you, sir. All right. Any other question, please? Any other question? Those that are just joining, even though you are just joining, if what we have said so far you have questions, feel free to ask. But any other question? You can raise up your hand if you have a question, particularly those of us online. Yes, you have a question. OK. Yes.
move everything together and be influential in all of them. So that, that kind of perspective, how do you balance? First of all, is to establish. Start with one. If you have many, and you want to work on all of them or, or, or more than one, start with one. Use this. You know the way business grow. In a business, when you grow a business to a level, okay, I will do a, a because of people that are not seeing me because my, I don't know, my, this place is not well illuminated. My, this thing is not showing very well again. Uh, okay, I think it's showing now. I don't know the light. So this is what I would do. I will show, I'm drawing, drawing something on the screen. Is, is the screen showing there? It's showing. Okay, so uh, look at this. Those, some of us that are here, you can join online to see what I'm doing on your phone. And, uh, and uh, you but mute so that there won't be feedback. So look at this. If you grow a business, the business grow to this level and then begin to go down. Now, for a, a wise businessman, why is at this level? You create a new product and service, grow. Why is at this level? So what that means is that when the business or the product is at the maturity stage and it's about declining, that means you are watching the trend of the sales of that product. You innovate, you improve, you, or you start another line of business. This is a model that has worked for many businesses. That's why some businesses have done so many things, they've had so many products, and they're still existing today. But when you are going to check what they started with and what they are doing now, it's entirely different. That's a good. So if I start with an area I'm interested in, for example, I want to have a, a I want to I want to have be a social entrepreneur. I want to have from street to school. I want to have motherly baby school. I want to have things around children. I can start which of them can I start with easily? Like that lady I told you. She started by paying the school fees of those children in school. So when he picked children from the street, he takes them to his school, public school, pay their school fees, pay for their clothing, pay for their shoes. So she now have different children in different schools in the area, some in private school. As he was doing it, he was looking for sponsor, one child, two child, three child. Today he has a school. Now, now that the school is growing and he has sponsor, he can decide that he wants to start his motherly baby So He's going to use the glory of that school, the success. If you want to start a mother baby home, people that are sponsoring might be willing because you are the successful in one and they want to be part of this success also. Do you understand? So use the glory of one to start the other if you want to do many. And there's nothing wrong with that. God gave you the gift, you can do it. Why not do it? You, you should, someone's, okay, my brother that said you should die empty. I think give your best to the world and die empty by doing as much as possible, all you can, before you leave this world. Okay. You are the one that chose that career. You are supposed to choose career in your area of college normally. Only that now you have chosen a career that is outside your area of college. Go ahead. So how long? The career now, you, you should immediately you discover yourself, you should not define that career. What is the place of that career in your calling? Am I going to use this career? I want to grow it to the peak to raise money to fund this dream so that in 20 years I can resign. I will have built this to a level. If it's a social enterprise, that means there is continuous funding. If it's going to be a business, I believe I'm called to do in an area, then of course the business will grow so I can continue the business. So it now depends on what it is. If it's going to be a social enterprise, I need a funding. So my job now is helping me to fulfill my calling. My job. So because at that means on this job now, I'm any 100K, 50% is going to the social enterprise. 50% is going to the social enterprise. And as I'm doing that, I'm also using the same money to do for sponsor. Because if you're doing social enterprise and you're getting results, people will support you. People will support you. If you are getting results, they can, everybody wants to part of what is good. Only that they want you to start with your money and see the result before they come and support you. This lady, like I said, this lady is supported from outside the country. Government of Japan is supporting this lady I'm talking about. Government of Japan. Stambik is supporting her. Stambik. The last I saw on her Instagram page, one of the courier companies supporting her. Courier company in Nigeria. International courier company. Because those companies have budget for corporate social responsibility. 
and they are looking at someone doing something they want to identify with, someone solving a social problem to support. Do you understand? Okay. Any other question? Both online and on ground. Any question, please? We have just about six minutes for this session. You know, we have a timetable and we are following that timetable strictly. <laughs> but we'll have a general, general discussion later in the day for every day. Any question? Okay, I need to hear from people that are online. I need them to talk to me. Okay, yes. Um, let me hear from Damaris. Damaris, are you there with us? Let me hear from. Okay, when God has an intention of where he created you, and meanwhile, you grow up in a family where they don't even understand the kind of child you are. Hello, meanwhile, what? You Meanwhile, you find yourself in a, you're brought up in a family whereby they don't understand you. They don't understand you at all, like as a child. Oh. They don't understand you. They don't okay, so because they don't understand opinions. you. Because they don't understand you, you think that if you don't that agree to your opinions, whenever you, whenever you, maybe you are by accident in that family, even though God did not create oh, you. Oh, fantastic. They don't understand that. Yeah. How can you? I get your point. A good example would be an individual who was born in a dysfunctional okay. home, or was born out of wedlock, or was born in a way that right from cradle he has issues. That's what you mean, right? Yes. And, and I'm repeating to you, yes, sir, yes, sir. that person, though born in a dysfunctional home, though born in that precarious circumstances, is still not an accident. It's still not an accident. Okay. Let me give you, let me give you an example. Look at the case of Moses. Look at Moses. Look at Moses. He was dumped. He was dumped. He was going to, if they did carry him, he would have died at that river. It was not an accident. All of us are born for a reason and for a season and for a purpose. However, the circumstances around us in life sometimes makes it difficult for us to manifest who we are born to be. The circumstances around us in life makes it difficult for us to manifest who we are born to be. And I, I think that is a challenge that uh, that um, um, Funke is having. Funke, the truth is that in spite of the challenge of that child, in spite of the challenge of that child, a number of those children grow up to become very great in spite of the precarious situation in which they were born. So if some of those children born in that precarious station came out to become great, that tells you something. Those children got to a point in their lives, they started asking questions, they started questioning everything around them, and they realized oh, yeah. their lives would be better. So as long as an orphan can grow up to become great, then the fact that someone is born in a precarious situation in a situation that is not palatable, does not mean it cannot grow up to fulfill its purpose in life. I don't know if I've answered that question, uh, Funke. Funke, are you still there? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I understand, sir. All, I right. Get, sir. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Any other question, please? Any other question? You have another one? Okay, it's time. Okay, thank you. Time to pass. <laughs> we'll go on break after this third session. Those are just coming in. We've had two sessions, but they will be on SoundCloud. They will be on, on YouTube, so you can always uh, get to 